Hi friends! This is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to Fatal 12 Part 3! Three. 3! Poke Chodro in the upper high card area to see parts 1 and 2. This is really good. It's getting interesting and complicated all in one. Also, I got a haircut. Oh, it's nice and like, you know how it's fuzzy? Yeah, it's fuzzy. Woo! Anyways. <laughs> so, thank you for coming back. Thank you for being here. And while you're here, why don't you subscribe? Because we're so close to 100! Whoa! Boom! <laughs> so, yeah, do that. And also hit the like button while you're at it. Make the uh, algorithm robots make uh, like me better. For some reason, they've been liking one video from last year really well for some reason. I have no idea. But I think it's bringing more people to see the content, which is great. And if you've been around forever, love you. Thank you for your support. If you're new, hi! <laughs> we play gay games. And we play gay games gay. Or games gay. Gay games gay. Yes. LGBT plus. Alright. So we're gonna keep going here. Last time we left off, we had jo just gone through the court. Which is like this giant clock. It seems that Miharu, uh, the blonde there, is very much crushing on Rinka. As is Naomi, who's very much crushing on Rinka too. However, both Miharu and Rinka are uh, the da dead. Yep. So, I can't recall what happens next. Once the man on the platform 12 elects the woman on platform 6, blah, they're both raised upwards and out of sight. Battle. Not long after, Platform 12 descends with a man on it. I assume it means that he has all three of her cards and has succeeded in eliminating her. After he returns, I think he shows a card to Parsa and claims it is the name of number 13. No, 8. I can, I can read and it claims it is the name of number 8. Having to say which card you take is probably what she would have explained if he hadn't interrupted her earlier. Which means everyone else gets to know the card you claim. Worry not, for... Worry not, for this is all taking place as you sleep. Time flows differently from the real world here. Why was that a question? Once you wake up, you will be greeted by the morning as usual. Tonight's session resulted in one elimination. I bid you all farewell for now. My consciousness begins to fade when she says that. The sensation is similar to when you start falling asleep. My train of thought has completely stopped at this point though. There's no way I can accept this. Not a single thing about it. Achievement unlocked! First week! That's terrifying. She just not exist anymore? The most accurate way to describe how I felt when I wake up, woke up this morning would probably be melancholic. That's fair. Uh, you just, one, figured out you're dead. Two, figured out you're in a death style elimination uh, with one of your friends as one of the contestants. And three, if you get eliminated, everything about you goes away. I wonder, does that mean that the that Naomi does not remember number 12? No, not just number 12, it was number 6, the girl, anymore, who had walked in and asked for directions. I wonder if they're gonna play that out. Granted, I'm not sure I even slept in the first place, but what I am sure of is that certain things I've forgotten have come back to me. Wednesday, May 2nd, Naomi and I were on our way back to Lion House from school. We were trapped in a fire on the train at that time. That explained why fire is listed as my cause of death. And it was no dream. It was reality. The fact that I couldn't stop shaking after remembering it. 
lent credence to its veracity. Even if... <laughs> yeah... Fact, it just took me a second to click that in. I apologize. I will say, if I have more trouble than usual, it's because I actually got a head hit over the weekend. And so, words are a little bit more fuzzy than normal. I do have um, aphasia from a old rugby incident, so words are iffy sometimes. So if they're a little bit more iffy today, please give me a little bit more credence and like leeway on that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Speaking of credence to his veracity, yep. Even if my mind had forgotten, my body certainly hadn't. Remembered being burned alive? Yeah! The fire broke out so fast that I could barely had time to react. Although I remember a feeling of relief and knowing that Naomi was safe. As for how the fire happened, I'm not entirely sure. My body starts to quiver and I get headaches whenever I try to think back. However, I do recall a very specific bag and the keychain attached to it for some reason. Turns out that I did indeed meet Parsa after my death, too. Like she said last night, I'd already heard her explanation once before. There's no doubt it happened in that odd dream world, too. I guess I've got no choice for the time being, but to believe last night's dream and piece my memories together. Yeah. Uh, I can't rip my head around this at all. As much as I'd like to be able to, this is the best I can manage right now. Even if I accept that it wasn't just a dream, there's still way too much I don't understand. I can't find a single noteworthy incident when I check the internet for any info about railway incidents on that date, either. Parsa did say that the cause of our deaths had been undone. In other words, the fire that killed me never happened once I became a participant in Divine Selection. That's the only explanation. That odd book's perched on my bookshelf, like always. I wonder if this one and the one that appeared in the Court of Fate are the same book. If so, that'd mean it makes its way between here and the dream world on its own. Whatever. Uh, there's no point in overthinking things now. So four cards in the book, too. Wait, four? That can't be right. Parsa mentioned that we'd automatically obtain cards when we learned some accurate information. Something about giving thoughts a tangible form. The card detailing my cause of death isn't here for some reason. That's not all. Maharu turned out to be a participant as well, so she should have her own set of cards. I figured I would at least have the card with her full, na full name since I know it, but I don't. Hmm. I wonder if there's some other conditions you need to meet. That isn't the main issue regarding her, though. I've been trying to keep myself from thinking about it, but it's about time I face reality. Only one of us can make it through the Divine Selection. That means either me or Maharu will need to be eliminated. That being said, I'd like to talk to her first. There's the tiniest chance that this might have just been my imagination going wild? I don't think so. I eventually abandon my train of thought and get ready to get, go to school. I make toast for breakfast and end up shoving it in the fridge because I can't summon the will to eat anything. I'm sorry. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, we get to go to school? What? Morning, Rini. Moo's already in the classroom by the time I arrived. Amicha Girls University High School, otherwise known as Amicha High. An apparently traditional school with facilities from kindergarten right up to college. It's co-ed through middle school, but at the high school level, all the boys have to go elsewhere. Yeah, get rid of the icky boys. People seem to have this image of it being one of those stereotypical all-girls Christian establishments, but it's not much different from a typical top-tier squirrel school. Yesterday was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, fun. I can't motivate myself to give a cheery, cheerful reply. What I saw last night refuses to leave my mind. Except the fact that I should be dead is proving to be a bit tricky. Just a bit. My, my, my dearest, also, why can you never wear a jacket correctly? 
not that I'm like complaining because I know you're like the protagonist in a Yuri anime type look, but like it's a lot easier to keep your jacket on if it's on your shoulders. Because then it's like hanging on your shoulders instead of being halfway down your shoulders and then you're having to squeeze your arms in to keep it there. Like that's very awkward. Just yeah, just like that. No. Hey now, where's your enthusiasm? Still tired from yesterday? Wouldn't be surprised considering how much we walked around. Yeah, I ended up falling asleep as soon as I got back. Probably why I woke up super early this morning too. Explain why you're here on a Monday. Whoa there, let's not imply that I'm always late on Mondays even though it's true. Well, talking to Mel helps me cheer up a bit. If it turns out that last night wasn't just my imagination, then I really don't know what to do about it. Probably better off just living life like usual. Until I get the chance to speak with Maharu, at least. Ironically enough, Miharu hasn't arrived by the time classes begin. Yeah. She's probably dreading this. In fact, she doesn't come to school at all. Yeah, she's probably avoiding you. I've sent her a message, but it is listed as being unread. This, following what happened last night, causes me to panic. Fortunately, Mayo has some calming news for me. Seems like Marharan skipped out today because she was feeling sick. She said she's in a good enough shape to go to work though. Huh? She replied to you? Yep, in a flash too. She never even read my message. Oh, hmm. That's weird. Maybe she missed it? I make an expression that screams, you're so full of it, in response. She tries to avoid eye contact, but eventually gives in when I refuse to stop looking at her. Something happened between you two yesterday? Hmm. <laughs> Did it, Rinka? Do you know what happened yesterday? Huh? Y yesterday? I can't help but repeat part of her question back at her. Don't tell me that Mahar has told her everything. You two were alone during the parade, right? A wave of relief washes over me when I hear that. Oh god, you're just talking about the Yuri. She's only talking about the amusement park. In fact, I can't think of anything in particular. Rinka! <laughs> Mal seems uh, legitimately concerned though. I can tell that Mahurin's got something on her mind. But what? Who knows? She wastes no time in reverting to feigned and ignorance. Come on, don't let don't keep me out of the loop. You yourself are keeping you out of the loop. Like, you literally just thought yourself alive so hard you forgot that you were in a death style elimination. Just saying. That kinda happened. And here I was ready for something heavy, considering how rare it is to see Meow Mao looking so serious. I could tell you, but here's the thing. You're the only one that can solve her problem. Uh-huh. Why's that? So, see ya! So Mal knows, of course. <laughs> hey, wait! Mal ignores me and trots right out of the classroom. Do-do-do-do-do, just dropped ominous hurt Yuri hint. No big deal. You're not- she's not in any club, so it's common for her to head straight home after school. In fact, she rarely stops by Lion House either. I always get brushed off whenever I ask what she's been up to. Maharu. What's on her mind exactly? Thinking back to yesterday, she did let, look like she wanted to say something when we were alone. Considering the dream that followed, the two might be related. You think? My dearest. Biggest regret. Literally one of your one of your omens. <laughs> I love Rinka. She's so oblivious of this. However, like she is like so cute. <laughs> this game is adorable. Which reminds me, Mao mentioned that Miharu would be going to work. I get to I get what she's saying now. 
She really does care for her friends. There's just one issue, though. I find it hard to keep my concerns about where she works at bay. I know the name of the place and where it is, but it's kind of hard to stroll in there. Why not? She did it for you and then literally hit on you. Like, she went all the way across town just to hit on you. And you missed it, love. I mean, it's a restaurant by definition, but it's a bit different from your standard fare. I could find a mouth tag along, but chances are she won't want to. No, you, you should go. After giving it some thought, I grab my phone and fire off a message. Ooh! Um, do you come to places like this often? Oh no, you brought Naomi! Why'd you bring the- Oh, Rinka! <sighs> nope, this is the first time. I was hoping to chat with Maharu since she works here, but... Maharu's workplace is a maid cafe located in Akihabara. It's a small, privately run establishment, so the staff just... has to wear maid outfits. Meaning none of the usual business you see from bigger outlets, but it still takes some courage to stroll in. There's no way I could have done it on my own, which is why I brought Naomi along as my sacrifice of sorts. It's the wrong thing! You are missing all of the Yuri! We aren't! Unsurprisingly, all the customers are guys, which helps us to feel especially out of place. I'd appreciate if you learned to act a little more ladylike, Rinka. What? <laughs> Maharu sounds beyond exhausted as she drops off my coffee. Sorry, but I need to talk with you, no matter what. Didn't read the message I sent, so I decided I'd better come by when Mao said you'd be at work. So it was her, huh? She messaged me this morning while I wasn't feeling too well, so I replied saying I should be able to make the work. You missed me th this afternoon, didn't you? Yep, during lunch break. I forgot to charge my phone last night, so I had to turn it off when I let, let it charge today. Now I'm upset that I missed an ever so elusive message from you. Oh, 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 there we go. She's even flirting with Naomi here, which is great. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Ooh, Maharu is not playing. <laughs> Mine. With that, she places Naomi's warm and fluffy cocoa in front of her. But she misses the coaster a bit, which leads to her inadvertently slamming down on the table. Naturally, this surprises some other customers, causing many of their gazes to turn our way. Eep! <laughs> oh, Naomi, you have no idea. You are in the wrong place. You should not have come. <laughs> Dear me, I'm awfully sorry. Maru turns to Naomi and delivers a polite bow. But according to that face, there's a lot more going on. Like, Maharu's probably w switched from being happy to just like, I am going to tear your soul through your throat and then shove it in this coffee. And you should leave. <laughs> Naomi looks terrified, despite being on the receiving end of an apology. <laughs> Unlike Lion House, this isn't the place where you can just sit down and relax, unfortunately. I wish you would have figured as much based on the fact that it's a maid cafe. If you need to talk, then I'll pop by Lion House after my ship. Well, assuming you're fine with that, of course. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry for bugging you. But I gotta say, that maid outfit really suits you. Makes your natural good looks stand out even more. Nice flirt there, Rinka. Oh. It suits me? Wow, uh, I've never thought I'd live to see the day you'd say that to me. Now you've kind of gotten me all embarrassed. Oh, Her face is bright and bright as she says that. Very uncommon occurrence. You'd imagine she used to customers complimenting her, but I guess it's different when it's a classmate. Oh, Rinka! <laughs> it's different because it's you! Literally, it's different because it's you. You are missing it so hard. 
Oh, no wonder it's her biggest regret. She's literally been like flaunting in front of you, going, please, please, please. And Rink is like, you have great feathers. <laughs> I only chose this job because I could earn good money in exchange for acting nice to people, but after hearing that, I'd say it's been worth it. Aww. Um, I'm not sure if you could say that out loud. <laughs> I think she is standing there among all these guys who pay her money going, oh, I didn't really care about any of them. Just you. <laughs> right when Naomi says that, the other customers burst out in laughter. <laughs> As you can see, that's just how I do things. Everyone else is fine with it. That's pretty cool. Oh my god, Rinka, you miss it. As much as I can appreciate how these places have unique work environments, I still don't l really like being in one. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> sit back and relax. She gives us a perfectly rehearsed work smile before moving on. I'm, I'm not too sure if I'm if my coming along was a good idea. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi, for knowing the obvious. Don't worry, I feel the same way. Figured there'd be some other girls here scouting out the cute outfits, but I figured wrong. Y Rinka, you are obviously gay, but you're missing all of the gay. Th that is n isn't quite what I meant. <laughs> Ignoring Naomi stuttering, I make an effort to start on my coffee. We finish up our drinks in a hurry and leave just as quickly. We get on the same train back as well, but I have to split up at Shinjuku Station. My stop. Uh-huh. Once it hits 9pm, I start preparations to close up shop. I opened up pretty late yet today, so there weren't many customers. We used to get lots of people coming along for lunch when my grand ran the store, but I can't make lunch. I can't make much. It's no surprise that they'd stop coming. Even so, the fact that some people still come by because they enjoy being able to relax and chat here makes me happy. I was about to say, if I had a regular cafe that was as cute as Lion House is, I would go there all the freaking time. It's worth mentioning that my grand handles all business and financial decisions for Lion House, even while in the countryside. I put in the orders and such myself, but that's all based on her instructions after seeing each daily report. This is made possible thanks to the laptop she took with her. She's actually more tech literate than I am, despite her age. Around the time, around that time, I finish cleaning up the store. Someone makes their way through the door, hearing a little jingle. Jingle! I look over to see who it is. Uh huh. Hey, you. Oh. I love how upfront Maru is, so we know like you'd be gay, despite how obliviously Rinka is. Like, oh my god. Hey, you. It's Maharu, who changed back into her school out uniform. Just remembering her in that maid outfit nearly causes an involuntary grin. So you are gay! Just act on it! I don't mean that in a bad way. It looks a lot better on her than I imagined. You imagined it? Although I bet more most things do, considering she's tall and stylish. In the end, it's her work outfit. So, it'd be kind of rude of me to laugh. Why are you laughing? Hey, did work drag on? Yeah, sorry about that. This girl who was gonna follow my shift cancelled out of nowhere, so I had to stay behind. Can't say I'm too impressed by whoever that, that was. It's still work, even if they're doing it part-time. It's one of those jobs where you get paid a lot for relatively easy work, so I'm not so surprised. You won't find many of us working there actually trying to make a living off it. Most of us are there just to make some money on the side. <laughs> it carries extra weight when you of all people talk about someone's work ethic though. Same applies to you. The majority of Mihara's wage goes straight into living expenses thanks to her situation at home. She doesn't pay for her tuition either. Thanks to a scholarship. You know a lot there. 
I don't know the full story, but her parents got divorced, so it's just her and her mom at home, I think. What's worse, her mom isn't in the best condition, so she struggles to keep consistent income. I might not be working for the money myself, but I can't really compare myself with Maharu, who's got my grand support me. When I've got my grand to support me. Speaking of which, she mentioned once that most of the money she makes comes from real estate. She always brushes me off when I try to dig deeper into it. Huh? What? Where's that coming from? Anyway, you wanted to speak with me, right? Is it alright if I uh, get my hopes up? Oh. <laughs> you know exactly what it's about. This will take a while, so grab a seat. Take my apron off and move to sit down with her. It won't take long at all, actually. She stops me before I can take my seat and then continues. I saw what unfolded in the dream world myself. There's no denying it that both of us should be dead right now. It seems like you don't quite remember the details of how it happened, though. It came back to me afterwards. My memory still jumbled up. But now I know that last night wasn't the first time I met that girl. Or goddess. Wherever you want to call her. <laughs> that makes things simple then. We both need to make it through to the end. She says this with a radiant smile. How can you smile at, at a time like this? When I see her smile, I can't stop my gut feelings from taking over. I lose my self-control the moment she confirms the divine selection is real. Everything I've been holding back since waking up from that dream comes pouring out. It's simple. You wouldn't have had any doubts about wanting to survive if I wasn't a participant, correct? But the fact that I am means you can't summon those survival instincts now. The idea of doing so in exchange for my life pains you far too much. That's just the type of person you are. You don't need to worry about that though. I'm fully prepared to give up my life for you. Oh, excuse me? What did you just say? Like I said, it's simple. If given the choice between either of our lives, I choose yours in a heartbeat. What the hell? Don't say that like it doesn't mean anything. Don't even joke about something like that. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have shouted. I break eye contact with her, giving myself a moment to recoup. Maharu replies by shaking her head while deciding on her next words. I say this with the utmost conviction. Besides, I think it's safe to say that every other participant is adamant on surviving too. Getting caught up in a kindness spells certain death for you. How can you be so calm about all this? As much as I don't want to think about it, she has a cause of death of her own as well. That moment's undoubtedly etched into her mind. My own death shocked me so much that my brain tried to block it out, and yet she's here acting like it's no big deal. I don't understand how she does it. Because I'm not doing this for your sake. I'm glad we got to talk about this. We really don't have it in you to take the initiative, huh? I'm best off not giving you information about me then. The last time I want, the last thing I want is more people going after you. Let's act normal at school too. You'll make it through this. So you can't let anyone, anything disrupt your day to day life. I need you to work with me as much as possible though. Your death would spell my own inevitable elimination. She finishes her spiel before facing away from me. I'll do whatever it takes to protect you. I can't open my mouth, not even after she's left my line of sight. I've forgotten to ask her about her own personal cards, as well as the reason behind me not obtaining any cards related to her. Uh, I make no progress for several days as I wait for the second round of divine selection to come around. I start to teach Naomi how to brew coffee bit by bit while I continue to engage in the usual banter with Maharu and Mao. None of this helps to ease tension in my heart, though. I can feel myself being pressured more and more by the reality that I've become a participant 
in divine selection again. That's Wednesday. Oh, hi. There are people in this world who don't deserve to live, and I've never had any issue counting myself among them. I spent my life stealing and killing as part of the Mafia in southern Italy. What? I got, I got to where I am today through countless betrayals. I was never in the big leagues, but I managed to find success after success as a mafi mafioso. Until, you know, I messed up when I shouldn't have and, well, died. Success was an imperative in a world that I lived in. The key was to avoid failing, because a single failure meant you'd be six feet under, and that's exactly what happened to me. It's funny though. Turns out, Lady Luck's impartial when it comes to whom she gives her blessing. Getting tossed into divine selection means I have the opportunity to live on, despite my mistake. I've been giving a new lease on life. I might not deserve to live, but that's irrelevant in the face of my desire to do so. So long as that desire is there, nothing else matters. That's the Federico Carminati way of life. I failed only once in my life and I'm determined to keep it that way. Guess Lady Luck isn't the only one to pay me a visit though. Her much less unfortunate sister has come sure to stop by too. Oh goodness. Hi. Hey Space Cadet, do you copy? This charming individual is Odette Malencon. Whoa, dang, look at you. Much like me, she's a participant in divine selection. Under normal circumstances, we should be aiming to eliminate each other, but we've agreed to help each other out for the time being. Well, I guess it'd be more accurate to say, she's forced me into a truce. Nothing much, thinking about something. <laughs> How about you focus on grub instead? I ain't about to let you good Chinese cook and go to waste. Cap Capricorno. <laughs> oh god, Jesus. We use Capricorno as my, as my code name when we're speaking. It's based on my zodiac sign. In turn, Virage is how I refer to her. My only issue is that pronouncing French words is kind of tricky for an Italian like myself. It shouldn't be, actually. Anyway, I'm the one that's just using code names. I did that mainly because our names are valuable information when it comes to eliminating others in divine selection. Neither of us are supposed to know each other's real name. Knowing her, she probably used some connections to pull my name out of the lake, but she won't tell me that straight up. Obviously, I know her real name as well, but I haven't told her. Keeping that stuff to ourselves is the reason our current relationship works in the first place. Gotta admit, I couldn't be happier after we're in Beijing. You ain't gotta find better Chinese grub anywhere than in China. <laughs> okay. They serve this stuff to the old emperors of Queen King Dynasty. So even the sauces are perfect. What's more, it's loaded with calories to combat the cold climate here. For a gal who lives on the sea, the perfect blend of taste and calories is just what I need. Are you a pirate? I'd love that. In fact, I agree that the Peking dish, uh, duck right there, probably the greatest thing I've ever come out of China. That's never tasted this good. The way it's made, it's just as horrible as what they do to grease to geese while making foie gras. Bike, don't change the fact that it's delicious. Least the ducks can do is hope they ain't as tasty in their next life. Oh. She shuffles more and more food into her mouth the second she quits yapping. This is her third plate of Pekin duck, by the way. She's had a plenty of goiza and steamed buns in between the two. Hard to believe someone from France would order food like this, considering how particular they are about their own full course meals. Just watching her pig out makes my stomach ache. Anyway, what I'm getting here is that, well, French food's still the best. 
I ain't got no issue letting Chinese food play second fiddle. Okay. Now wait just a second. I don't mind what second and beyond. But I'm not gonna let you imply. Oh! I always do that. Imply that Italian food is anything but the best. Fine. Let's go find a well-built Chinese person. Whoever wins in a fight between us three can say their country has the best food. <sighs> okay, fine. You win. Well, you don't. But let's change topics before things escalate. She really would hunt, so hunt for someone, too. Only problem is that there isn't... Uh, that it doesn't matter what kind of tanks she recruits. She'd still beat both of us senseless. No? Ain't many people who could take her in a fist fight, men included. She's the head of a group teaming with tough seamen for a reason. So she is a pirate. She's basically French pirate queen, right? How about it, Federico? Time for booze? Nope, this is great. Tastes like dissolved candy. Give me a break, o uh. Just like that, she baited me into saying her real name. I don't know what you're thinking about either earlier, but here's a p how's about we quit wasting each other's time with this whole charade? Charade? What's that supposed to mean? I already know the answer, but I ask anyway. She chucks more before showing me a big, toothy gr smile. I wonder. It's pretty obvious that everyone's first move on this divine selection game or whatever is going to be to get a death grip on the other participants' names. You wanted code names, but hey, they ain't gonna stop anyone from finding out our real names. Cause of death, too. We all die at the same time. So all it'll take is a bit of digging to find out how everyone kicked the bucket, especially when it involves people like us. You catch my drift. N yeah. Uh, no need to treat me like an idiot. I'm aware that information warfare is the name of the game here. Gonna find one another's regret, too. And the fact that you wanted to use code names in spite of that proves you're just a small fry. You should forget all about your real name. Everyone's regret card has handed out to other participants at random, right? It means one of them knows yours, and one knows mine. Well, yeah, but there ain't no way anyone someone's gonna luck out and get all three pieces of our information on either of us when they're handed out at random no one elected either of us during the first round which serves as proof doesn't seem like that Indian guy has our cards either if he did then he would have gone straight for us since he knows it's best to take out the toughest competition first what would you have done if someone just so happened to get all of your cards when they were first distributed? Nothing much. I just die knowing I lost my bet and cursed my fate about it. I really can't stand this woman sometimes. She makes you think she's got it all planned out, but she leaves the most crucial bits up to luck. Her cautious and ra rational actions end up getting thrown out the window when she goes wild into dessert discernible reason for no discernible reason I honestly don't know what's going on in her head this is the first time I've come across a woman who doesn't just do whatever a man tells them to ew Federico the worst part of it all though well either way we're working together till it's just us two if you ain't up for it then let me smack you around some more that's what she does to resolve everything. She resorts to violence. She sounds awesome, and you sound absolutely misogynistic. Can't recall her nasty name out loud, so I just keep the insults to myself. Moving on. Is there a reason we're in China when we need to be in Japan for the final day of divine selection? Any of us? Much, much as I love Peking duck, I've never been able to eat it right here in Beijing before. You serious? We've got some homework to do out here as well. Huh? Right before our ship got attacked, I got wind of a top brass executive from a Chinese food company collapsing during a meeting. 
as you might have guessed, Odette's the representative for a certain shipping company. Of course, we're talking about this woman. So, ain't no way it's a plain old shipping company. Doesn't matter if it involves drugs or even dead bodies. They'll take any job they're paid to do. In that regard, you can call them smugglers. Their existence is kept in dark, though. Likely because certain governments aren't shy about making use of them. Well, it's not quite accurate to say they take up any job, considering Odette makes it a point to turn down anything she considers boring. Certain circumstances led to, a hit, uh, to my hitching a ride on her boat, which is how we ended up cooperating in the first place. Hmm. I went to look up more information on it after we'd been brought back, but turns out there wasn't any record of the incident at all. Uh, hold on, how does that mean? Can't even take a bite of food in front of my mouth when she says it. She, on the other hand, grabs a bottle of <laughs> a drink and downs what's left in it. I gotta keep tabs on this sort of information thinks my line to Mert work, so I ain't gonna forget about something like that easily. His name's Ro Chenho. I dug deeper after that. Here's the kicker. He seems to be alive and well. Uh-huh. What? The moment she mentions his name, the book beside her emits a strange light. It's a big, thick, auburn-colored book. Gold leaf de decorations on it. But there ain't no pages in it. Just a big hole in the middle when you open it. Got the exact same book, see? It's some kind of card storing book used for divine selection. Now we're talking. Dull light focuses into a single point once she opens the, her book. It gradually fades, and it's placed in a rectangular piece of paper that catches it while it's hovering midair. Bingo. Looks like our friend Ro Chan Ho is numeral seven. Damn, that was easy. The girl who was going on about being a goddess mentioned that because of all of our deaths have been undone. The fact that Odette was able to notice such a paradox proves that the girl wasn't lying. Now we gotta play the guessing game. He was fat, so he might have had bat diabetes. Which means he could have died from low blood sugar. Then again, I can't see a bigwig like him taking the proper precautions, so something killed him unexpectedly. Then it more than likely have been a stroke or heart attack. No love from the cards. Huh. She calls it a guessing game. But she clearly isn't taking stabs in the dark. Does the fact that the card didn't appear mean she's not on the right track? Hmm. Maybe there's some kind of condition that causes the cards to appear. How come Rose's name card never appeared before now, even though I had learned about it earlier? Health, I know. Guess you gotta think a little harder if you're that unsure. How about you help me out here? Wait a minute. I thought up a few other possibilities just now, but wasn't sure whether they were right or not. You sure love talking to yourself. My attempt to tease her falls on deaf ears. The grin that spreads across her face soon after bursts with confidence. Between a stroke and a heart attack, I bet that he suffered the former. Wouldn't be surprising if his diabetes caused him to have one out of the blue during his meeting. How's that sound? She directs her question towards the book, as if it nod back. Amazingly, though, it does respond. It reacts the same way as if as when she retained Rose name guard. Numero 7's cause of death was stroke. Things went well this time. But it seems one of the rules is that you gotta believe in your answer to make a card believe appear. Uh, Can't expect results from blind guessing. Even though this all seems kind of uh, ambiguous. Gotta believe in it, huh? I should mention that Debt went through the entire process while she continued to chow down on her food. I planned, planned on going easy on the booze so I could stay rational, but I ended up downing my drink as well. I figured that being stuck with her is a bad thing, but on the other hand, it might be perfect for me. This woman is gonna be useful. It's not often that you find someone who's got the brains to match the brawn, so I should be able to get rid of anyone in my way with her around. 
Why would she cooperate with me though? Maybe she figures I have all of the information I need on her. So she's doing this to make sure I don't hand anything off to the other participants. We were on the same boat when it sank, so naturally, we we you'd think we both died the same way. And since I got her name and cause of death, she wants to keep me in check. What she doesn't know is that I don't actually know her cause of death. She shouldn't know mine either. We must have might have died on the same the ship when it was attacked, but the actual causes weren't by drowning or from fire. Okay. Okay. I see you. In reality, the only information we have on each other is our names. And that's just making it seem like she knows more so she can have leverage over me. Basically, this whole cooperation thing is front so she can get her hands on my info from where when we're the two last standing. <laughs> now that's that's the kind of chowing down I like to see. Bring it, bring us the best wine you've got. Yeah, count me in. The most important challenge of my life is about to begin. I ain't about to fail, and I certainly ain't gonna let her drink me under the table. She can definitely drink you under the table. Also, you gotta catch up. That's the thing. We end up drinking until all the wine in the restaurant is gone. Amazingly, though, she pops open another bottle back at the hotel as the substitute for water. I ain't about to join her, so I go back to my room and sleep. Next morning, I notice that I have Rose card in my own book, too. Well. Fascinating. Ooh. Uh-huh. So, we're gonna pause here, and obviously we're following this person's story. This is amazing. <laughs> Like, wow. I was not expecting them to hop away from Rinka. I was thinking they were going to stick with Rinka and Meharu, but nope, this is interesting. Definitely twisted up the plot there. With that, come back, hang out with me, do some subscribing and the stuff, and then you get notified, especially if they ring that little bell. But, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you are having as much fun with this as I am. And with that, I love you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye!